that it was a hepatitis B shot that they had been he had been given on day one. My daughters were born at a different hospital than him previously earlier. It was the county community hospital in Santa Cruz, but it shut shut its doors, so we had to take them to this Catholic-run hospital, a Dominican hospital in Santa Cruz, May 25th, 1988, when he was born. And, and then they used some experimental product on my wife, my wife's uh, lady parts uh, to help her to uh, dilate. And uh, I, I didn't like any of it. And so they were kind of uh, kind of forcing her to birth, I guess, to save a few bucks because time is money and all that, right? I think it worked. She practically spit him out. There was there was actually nobody around at the time when he came out. It was like, oh, oh, you need help, ma'am? You know, oh, you know, there's nobody there. I mean, this thing worked very fast. I was there, so I was I was trying to get the attention of somebody. But as far as vaccines went, my wife and I were oblivious. So I mean, if they gave him a hepatitis B shot on day one, which I strongly suspect, and then two weeks later, he suddenly dies in his sleep overnight. Okay, and he had good lungs too. He he had his fair share of colic. He was crying. That's a good sign, that healthy lungs. So, you know, I know what it's like. And, uh, you know, nobody understands. I mean, when, you, when you're when you numb with such a thing and you think, God, I mean, who can understand what I personally am going through? I've got no idea. No idea. The trauma I was facing. And my, my marriage was already rocky, shaky. I mean, it was, I, I was a bad husband. I was a, I was a good dad. Okay, I was. All things considered, I was a good dad. And uh, my daughters respect me to this day and we're well bonded because of it. But it would have been easy to be a piss ant, you know. It really would have been, raising them. I, I, I could have said things that weren't appropriate about their mother, but instead I was defensive. I blamed myself for the breakup of the marriage, which was true. I mean, she didn't have to take the direction she did, and she... At the end of the day, she hasn't wound up with any winners better than me, apparently, because as far as I know, she's living single. But, uh, hey, free will choice. You know, you can't have automatons, and nobody wants to be with somebody that uh, doesn't want to be with them. It's as simple as that. I, nobody in their right mind. I don't want to be. I don't want to be with somebody that doesn't want to be with me. I want to be with somebody that really wants to be with me. I mean, I'm so tempted all the time. I mean, I meet these cute women. I mean, yeah, they're they're young, but they're women. There's nothing illegal about me dating a young woman. There's nothing immoral about it. There's nothing unbiblical about it, nothing unethical about it. Yet, the consternation I would face in society, I mean, I mean give me a break. It's like, oh my God. You know, the, what will people think? Oh, what will they be saying behind my back? What about my own family even? Oh, my God, it would be so traumatic and upsetting. Oh, my God, he's with a woman that's 21 years old. You know, but it happens. I mean, I get looked at by cute young women in a very alluring fashion where they would make it very easy to ask them out. You know, they might say no. It might be delusional and all in my head that they would date an older man but uh, a lot of women do apparently like older men and they're they could be flirtatious and uh, enticing and uh, alluring and I, sometimes i just feel like saying hey you want a husband you got one because i don't want to dink around at this point in my life i spent so much time with a single man i know what i want and it came out powerfully about a year or so ago in a dream and it really showed me what I value. When I get lost in the haze and the, the massive blob of madness that is the world system and, and this business of fighting the good fight. And like Friedrich Nietzsche said, you know, when you're fighting these monsters, you've got to be careful not to stare into the abyss too long lest you become one with the abyss, you understand? It, it can make you insane. So God, in his mercy, gave me a dream. 
But it wasn't just any run-of-the-mill dream. And it was better than even a wet dream, believe it or not. I mean, it really was because it was based in just a very loving moment with a female. And it just tells me how perfectly natural it is to have this incredible, irresistible pull, okay, that, that's so powerful for the opposite sex. And it's such a beautiful thing. And I'm just so glad that I'm a man. If for no other reason, it's just to enjoy the beauty of God's finest creation, his crowning glory, the woman. I mean, for God's sake, ladies, you know how much, you know, don't, don't, you know, don't let it go to your head, okay? But you know what you are to men, right? I mean, you know what they want to do to you. They want to cuddle you. They want to snuggle you, okay? They want to hold you. They want to be comforted. They want to share in your peace. They want to be grounded. You know, I, I've compared the female and the male relationship to electricity, the poles on a, on a battery, for example. You got your... Um, You've got your negative and your positive. You've got your ground and your charge, your positive side. So people think of one as recessive and one as dominant. And typically we think of men as the dominant and the female as recessive. But understand this, that the positive charge, okay, is no different in terms of power, dominance, than the ground charge. Okay, none whatsoever, the base or ground charge. Okay, it's no different. It's, it's impotent, utterly impotent on its own. That's, that's the way it is. That's why it's so commonly understood. Hey, it, and it's true. I mean, some, some, there's some truisms out there. A lot of it's BS that don't make sense, idioms and whatnot, sayings. But some do make sense. And one of them is that behind every great man is a woman. And I know that. I've got no use for making millions of dollars, billions of dollars, and having all the accoutrements there. None. Doesn't, doesn't float my boat. Doesn't, it doesn't do it for me. But to have the right woman, to have somebody that really wants to be possessed in a good way, of have a jealous husband, but in a good, pure-hearted way, where she understands that she's a godly woman too, that she too can be jealous and she's not afraid to let me know when I start transgressing that border, that boundary. And I'm insensitive to her and it's a mutual thing. It's a very beautiful thing. It's very normal as the day is long. We got it from God. We're made in God's image and likeness. So there is a form of jealousy that's a beautiful attribute actually in its purest form. Of course you understand, honey. You don't want to hurt me. You know how jealous I am. And you know, you're my girl. You're my wife. I want to go through eternity with you, honey. Do you understand? This is the commitment I want you to make. This bull ain't giving away the milk for free. You know, we think of that saying where, you know, that uh, mother might tell her daughter, hey, uh, you know, why he's not going to buy the cow if as long as the milk is free sort of thing right which indicates that you got to get a commitment from this guy right so but what makes what makes the male female relationship powerful is that coming together and that unity a cord of three strands is hard to break and when you've got the male and the female and the God at the at the head, lead, letting them direct their paths, letting God direct their paths individually and collectively as a couple. It's a very powerful, beautiful thing. I've gained a lot of respect for it through the ages, through through my age, through the years, ages. I'm not that old, but listen, um, it's beautiful and it's powerful. And we need to remember what we are as human beings. We are made the image and likeness of God. God, the almighty creator, God, our owner, is male and female, okay? So you ponder that. And when it comes to how you you know, respect the opposite gender, always remember that men should see 
try to see things through a woman's eyes. If you can do that, you will be much more tactful in dealing with the female. Sensitive, intuitive, logical, and, 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 and uh, intellectual about it. And the same holds true for the woman in dealing with the man. I mean, ladies, you understand. I mean, come on. If you were a guy, you would understand, right? You get it. You know, I mean, hey, remember the episode of Seinfeld where it was it Jerry and George and Elaine, right? I, I think it was. Elaine made the remark when uh, George was upset about being caught naked and having been in the cold water in the pool and his shorts down, you know. It's humiliating, right? Like my friend Jeff, I remember I was surfing down in Santa Cruz and we were in the back of this 54 Chevy pickup he had bought for my dad, a beautiful truck. Had the windows on the cab that, on the corners too, so it had a total of five windows on the truck. But uh, No, I think six, he had the back one too, so it was a very beautiful truck. Long story short, my dad had bought that truck in Mexico. He had to have the engine rebuilt piece of crap he was salvaging what was left of a 48 foot trimer and he had built and wrecked down on the rocks in mexico bringing it back north and all lady crew and ran the boat up on the rocks and just tore the bottom out of it she got off course she fell she fell asleep during the night but he was he was salvaging stuff like winches and rigging and the mast and stuff and so he had to buy a truck to transport. He bought this truck, and the engine went out. And, I mean, it was overloaded for sure, probably by about threefold, fourfold. I mean, the mast alone was a 48-foot sailboat, so it was a to the bowsprit. So it was at least a 44-foot mast, like 44 feet. I mean, that's a lot. That's that's a long mast, and he had this thing. He was trying to sell it, you know, salvage what he could off the boat, but. Jeff and I were in the back of that truck. He somehow ended up buying from my dad. I didn't guess I didn't want it. And um, because our families knew each other. But Jeff and I, Jeff was a couple years older. We're both surfers. We've done a lot together. We've been to Hawaii together. We've been to Baja, California together. We did a lot of stuff together. I was a teenager, most mostly when I was teen, mid, late teens. But um I've known him since 1969. Uh, Felt him when my family first moved back from Europe. But uh, anyhow, we're in the back of his truck changing out of our wetsuits, and you get your towel around you, but Jeff had looked down at himself, and he, he was just aghast, and he just he exclaimed that he had shriveled into womanhood. And uh, I cracked up immediately. I could not stop laughing. I mean, if laughter is medicine, I got a, I got a good long dose of medicine. But it was the funniest thing I ever heard at that moment, because it was so spontaneous. It seemed so natural. I, I don't imagine he had pre-planned it, but it was just the funniest thing I'd ever heard, you know. And uh, I thought at the time, maybe it's not so funny, poor guy. But uh, you know, this is what guys go through, right? And uh, so Elaine in that episode at Brooklyn, I don't know how you guys walk around with those things, right? So yeah, the ladies know, ladies that are sensitive to these things, they know, they're mature about it. And, you know, I, I, I love the female of the species so much. I mean, nothing could ever make me not. I'm just infatuated. And they, the, the collective species, the female, I mean, she makes me praise God and... Um, and the more I, 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 I feel this irresistible attraction to the female of the species, I understand why girls rule and why they should. And why, in my estimation, it's women and children first off the sinking ship, right? That's replete through our culture. That's understanding. It's a given because it's an instinct that God put in us that the female, I mean, it's just to protect, it's like, it's its just the natural law. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It's natural law. 
So we are equal, but you could say that in a sense that the female is more important. It's just logic in terms of understanding natural law and the instinct God put in the species.